Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to wrap up today with a special selection which is where one of you tell me exactly what it is I need to check out. Today we got one from Mika. I would appreciate a bit of an analysis on Joanna Newsom Only Skin since you enjoyed some Joanna before and this little track frankly rocks. Alright, let's dig into this. See what Joanna Newsom is bringing to the table today with Only Skin. notes in and that violin heart spoke and there was a silence you took to me something running for a life you will ever more be and the plague of the beautiful layer Interesting rhythmic ideas here. Nothing's really. I should say specifically our guitar and our vocals are in opposition. Maybe harp, not guitar. swells in the strings Ooh, 
not where I thought that was going. really dig the ebb and flow between the larger productions and the more intimate ones but there's still a really interesting rhythmic divide between the vocals and the music and of course as I say that they line back up doesn't feel riff based at all. Each section is wholly linear. Also, we're halfway done, and the sheer quantity of lyrics.
the sight of my baby out there. Some of these are very strange uh, key and mode shifts. Watching the bats bring night in. Well, elsewhere as to worries of wax white wound. Endlessly toward seashores of man. Last week, our picture window produced a half bird. <laughs> This section doesn't know what it wants to be emotionally. I think it's providing a really interesting confusion that contrasts well with the solidified atmosphere of our previous sections. a bit of a lullaby right here. Fumbling green gentleness. You stop by I was all alive in my doorway we shout and chime and when you went I was gone. See I got Certainty say we survived. Then down and down and down and down and down and deeper. Stoke without sound. The blameless flames you and the sleeper. Interesting to lay on the harmony. actually uh, a subtle time signature shift that worked really well. Spot for the storm. 
Saddle Accelerando. Interesting rhythm. This is still in the three pulse, but rhythmically trying to push against that pretty hard. Okay, <laughs> 20 seconds of silence. I just wanted to make sure there wasn't something at the end of that track. Um, geez, talk about a massive track. Incredibly dense on all fronts. Lyrically written as if it were a folk track. Musically composed as if it was a classical track. There are no, at least from what I picked up, no choruses in our vocal line, our, uh, our lyrics. They're fully linear, much like a, uh, a folk track would be. However, the music is also completely linear. There is repeated lines in our harp um, or guitar, whatever that... I'm, I'm, I keep leaning into heart based on sonic quality, but there's a couple of lines that feel much closer to uh, how you would play them on a guitar. So I'm, I'm really not sure what that instrument was. It was right panned very close to the ear. Um, in fact, that was something really interesting I want to talk about uh, real quick is <laughs> just kind of I cut myself off there. Uh, the only repeated aspect is that instrument right there. It tends to have an ostinato or a riff or a lick, whatever you want to call it. A repeated phrase that it plays throughout each section. That phrase changes for some sections and the length of it shifts as well. Sometimes it's just a couple of beats. Sometimes it's a full bar. Sometimes it's a four bar phrase. But it is a repeated idea where nothing else really falls into that. The strings, the horns... Uh, the auxiliary percussion, all of it is, uh, for the most part, linearly written to encompass a song that gradually moves through an idea instead of repeating itself to become the idea. Um, but yeah, I want to talk about composition or production a little bit. This feels strange i'm curious let me see if i have a personnel list on this uh joanna newsom was one of the people who produced it alongside van dyke parks 
So I'm going to assume that this was definitely... Jeez, there are a lot of lyrics. Um, this was, at least in some part, exactly what she wanted. Also, it says written by Joanna Newsom. Uh, I don't know if that's lyrics or, or vocals. Or, sorry, lyrics or music. It doesn't talk about any composer in here, so I have to assume that Joanna also composed this, which is phenomenal. Oh, actually, this does get uh, tagged as folk. Folk, pop, singer, songwriter. Uh, yeah, I would definitely put this in the folk area, at least lyrically. It 100% it uh, sits there in the same realms as something like Bob Dylan. Um, but musically, definitely not folk. Um so, anyways, this is something that she at least had a part in doing. She feels like she is in my face. Uh, it is like going to a concert, but you're not... I mean, you might be in your seat, right? Because the orchestra, the horns and everything, the strings feel behind her. But instead of her being on stage with the, the band behind her, it feels more like she's standing right in front of my face singing at me. And there is a harp player or a guitar player standing on her left, which would be to my right. And then the orchestra is way back on the stage. And none of them are panned right, really. A lot of it's to the left. So it's almost like I'm tilted a little bit where the stage is to my left. It's weird. In a... I don't, I don't want to even put that as like a good way or a bad kind of weird. It's just different. I I can't say I've heard anything like it. I don't know if it adds or detracts. It's definitely something that caught my attention on several occasions. But it just kind of was. It was just a, a unique decision, I think, is, is how I want to word it. But it's it stood out to me so much. I, I don't think there's any way to avoid that. Um, her vocals feel almost too present at times. Again, not to the detriment of the song. It's not like it overshadowed anything else, but just something that kept screaming at me. Hey, look at me. I'm right here. You know, the rest of the band's way over there. They're also to the left. Have you noticed that? That's kind of odd. Uh, and it's, uh, when it was just her and the guitar harp, guitar is what I'm probably going to call it <laughs> It wasn't that obvious because they were the only sounds. But as soon as the orchestra came in, they just feel so distant compared to everything else. I don't know. Maybe that one's just me. Um, but I couldn't help but think about it. It constantly was screaming for attention, the, the production choices. Um, I, I couldn't help but talk about it. It's, it's so odd to me. But of course, the next thing that comes to mind is something I spoke about quite a few times. Rhythmic cadence. It's clear that Joanna is not a fan of repetition. Not only is the song wholly linear lyrically and structurally, but it's lyrically, musically as well. And I... If we dig into even her lines, her vocal lines, they do not feel cyclical at all. If you look at a lot of uh, rock, pop, jazz even, anything mainstream, and you look at vocal lines, the words themselves change, but the underlying melody, the notes that you would write down on sheet music if you were to transpose it, or sorry, transcribe it, would be a loop. It would be a riff, much like the guitars and drums and electronic music or, you know, the instruments behind, you know, whatever. There's, there's going to be a loop in the, the lyrical notes and rhythms. And here it feels like she even decides to not do that. It feels like a mix of... It feels like the rhythmic properties of spoken word, where the rhythms and notes are dictated by the flow of thoughts, not by any underlying musicality. 
but then it's done in a musical way. There are specific notes and rhythms chosen for these words. And it's, uh, it just comes off, uh, again, a unique decision. There aren't many bands, I mean, even when we talk about folk music, we talk about Bob Dylan. We, you know, I've only checked out one song of his, and I might have heard a couple on my own time, but he's another person who utilizes riffs underneath the lyrics, the notes and rhythms that he sings to that the words are placed on top of are repeated from verse to verse to verse. There is a rhythm to it all, a flow, uh, a cycle. And she chooses to ignore that. It feels very flowy because of that. Well, I guess that's, no, because like uh, loops can have flow too, but it feels a uh, stream of consciousness, I should say then. Almost like improv. It feels almost like improv. Like a, comp a pre-composed improv. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm losing this metaphor. But I hope you understand where I'm going with this. It's, it's a very unique decision to do. Especially when you have so much lyrics. Uh, and decide to say, okay, each line is going to be unique. Each phrase is going to be unique. Each stanza is not going to repeat what another one did. Um, it really provides a component to the song of, well, uniqueness, to use the word again. There are very few songs that I would hear in this style like this. Um, and I think we checked out Sawdust and Diamonds before. If I can spell. Uh, no. Oh, you know, Sawdust and Diamonds has been requested uh, and has shown up in some polls, but has never come through. Anyways. Yeah, there's just something wholly unique to this. The entire approach is about uh, uniqueness, not just in the decision of how to craft the song, but in each individual aspect of the track. Um, it makes me feel like the song is supposed to be personal. Or about someone, some singular person. In a way that is to say that while people do have experiences that allow them to be empathetic towards other people experiencing something similar, each person's experiences themselves are wholly unique. No one will experience something the exact same way I do, or you do, or they do. I kind of get that feeling here where there's not allowed to be a single aspect of repetition of, uh, re of, uh, what is it? A, a reused component. Everything must be unique. And that makes the song feel very singular in a lot of ways. And that's kind of where I'm leaning to this. It, it just feels like a very personal song. Maybe it's about her. Maybe these are her experiences and she wants to make sure that every aspect of the track leads to this idea of one person's experience through life or through this situation or whatever it's about. Or maybe, you know, maybe this is not about her and it, it's a concept album. You know, I don't, I don't know the details. That's, that's where you guys come in and, and inform me. Oh, this was about this, about this person's life or she was informed by this and stuff like that. You guys give me the context. I tell you what the song is telling me. <laughs> um, but yeah, just that, that unique angle. I'm going to get off of it right now, but it stood out so much. to me. Every single aspect in here is about making sure nothing else is like it. We got to talk about... I can't talk about the music in particular. Because 17 minutes of linear music is too much to break down. But there are some concepts in here that I really enjoyed. First of all is instrumentation. It shifts from section to section. Sometimes we have 
just the string section. One time we introduced the clarinet. There was a trumpet momentarily. I didn't. I can't say we had a lot of brassy stuff going on in here, but there was a trumpet in one section, very mellow, muted. Might even have had a straight mute in it uh, to keep the volume down. Um, we had our our guitar. <laughs> uh, there was a drum kit in some places, but not all of them. Uh, there was a tuba I heard, or, hmm, might not, it didn't have to be a tuba. It could have been a, a lower sax as well, like a berry sax. Uh, flute, of course, I think I heard an accordion a couple of times. Um, just a wide range of instruments, but didn't blow it all in one section. It, it never felt like one moment in this track was bring in everything that we've heard. It was, you know, what is necessary for this vibe I'm going for. And I can really appreciate that. It's an adherence to a, a vision. And anything that doesn't meet that is excluded. Which makes me really wonder what's up with our guitar. Why is it present in every single section? Why is it so dominant in the mix? Why is it right next to her as present as she is and not with the rest of the, the instruments? It stands out as a unique <laughs> instrument in our, in our band. I don't know. Maybe it's the one that feels most like her. She connects with most and feels that it's the instrument to help tell her story where everything else is uh, secondary to that. Because even when we're at our most isolated, it's never just vocals. It's vocals and the guitar. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's important, and I don't know why. Uh, many of the instruments were used beautifully, though. A lot of it was just done for harmonic texturing to provide the chords that create the atmospheres and the emotions that each section is supposed to um, feel. But we also hear some really nice ideas that are based in what the instrument does best. We have these nice glissandos in our flutes and violins. Uh, we did have a quick... Uh, a quick playing, 16th notes I think it was, in our violin at one point in the darkest section uh, with the bow just going back and forth quite quickly, which is something that would require double tonguing on some of our flutes and clarinets, uh, especially at the tempo. They could have kept up with a really great musician, but it would have also required a at least two musicians to stagger breathe uh, just based on how long that, that idea went on for. Something about aerophone musicians is... You're exhaling, which means you also need to inhale to live. <laughs> so if you were to play back and forth two notes for several bars, you could either do circulatory breathing like we've seen in the Colin Stetson video. I'll link that right there. Um, or you would need two people so one can breathe while one plays. They line back up. One breathes. This one breathes and stagger your breathing. Um... So that's something that strings are just naturally more attuned to. They can play faster, easier, without having to use any advanced techniques, and they can play indefinitely until, you know, the endurance gives out the muscles. Um, and, uh, yeah, so each instrument was just utilized uh, to its strength. Like I said, a lot of it was kind of these long, held-out notes to craft these atmospheres, but uh, it was neat to hear unique ideas for each instrument to come in and kind of add an extra texture or an extra color that another instrument couldn't paint with uh, to craft some of these these emotional atmospheres. So that was really neat. Um, chord choice, note choice even in some cases. It's kind of bizarre. She'll pick and I'm going to say that she composed it because that's what my limited personnel list says. There is no composer, so I assume that she wrote all this music, which again, is just astonishing, at least. I remember last time we checked out Joanna Newsom that I uh, was positive, or I praised her lyrical writing. 
And here, I mean, it's incredibly dense. We have 17 minutes of almost straight talking, singing. But if she also wrote this, which I, like, I vaguely remember someone saying in the comments that she also composes her music, but just being a strong wordsmith, lyricist, and composer all at the same time is just bonkers. And it's not like she's writing simple music. If you take the lyrics, the vocal work out of this and possibly just give it to series of instruments, instead of just giving it one central instrument, maybe pass it around between a few, you'll have a pretty typical 20th century classical piece here. This is nothing to scoff at. Um, there is a lot of really great, interesting, complex writing here for a large series of instruments without any overlap. I mean, just based on this track alone, assuming she is the composer of it, I would say that she should be listed as a 20th century composer. Easily. <laughs> um, 21st century? I don't know. When did this come out? 2006. So yeah, that'd be uh, 21st century. If I'm right, correct me if I'm wrong there. <laughs> I'm not super confident in that. Uh, it, it goes one way or the other. It's either plus one or minus one, I always forget. Um, but anyways, yeah, she definitely should be listed as a composer based on this track alone. I don't remember too much about the specifics of the last track we've checked out from her. Um, but I, I really don't care. If she's composed this track, she is a 21st century composer in my books, and one of the better ones. Not going super far into complexity, but writing complex enough music that it is certainly not within the realms of mainstream uh, musical tendencies. Anyways, where was, where, where was I going with that? Oh yeah, the instrumentation. Uh, instruments doing uh, things that uh, they excel at. Oh, the chords. Yes, chords and, and note selection. Um, we'll be doing something that's very uh, bright and positive, semi-whimsical maybe at times, and then just out of nowhere. We'll like dip into these very complex chords, two or three of them usually, that contrast with the brightness but don't dip into like darkness and it's like it's this complex middle ground just really choice chords and then pull back out of it and act like nothing happened very interesting um there are a couple of notes from our violin in like the first or second section i i pointed them out and it's just it just leans into dissonance out of nowhere i'm not sure if it's supposed to be foreshadowing for some of our heavier sections but uh, yeah, just at least to me, like I said, very interesting choice notes and chords throughout all of this. No section is fully entirely one emotion. It might be predominantly an emotion, but there will always be aspects that momentarily dive in and muddy the waters of the emotional aspect a little bit. Or not muddy the waters, complicate the emotional aspect. Uh, and that's just. I love it. I do. It's, it's, I'm not going to say every single, uh, every single time it happened, I was completely on board, but I love that experimentation. Uh, and I'm sure it makes sense to her. And I think that's what's important here. Authorial intent. Um, and maybe once I understand the song better, maybe those choices will make sense to me. There's also a series of sections in this song. I counted about five or six of them. Um, and they seem to have a bit of an ebb and flow. We'll have very wide, sometimes brighter sections that dip into some darkness. And then we will have very mellow, sometimes dark, quieter sections that feel more personal and isolating. Um, feel more so that Instead of singing a song, she's more of speaking about something very true to her. And it creates not just a compelling aspect to the storytelling, but also a nice contrast 
for the listener. We go from these very large productions to quiet to to smaller productions, louder sections to quieter sections, and actually through that, there's actually used actually like three times. This word's starting to sound weird. There is some nice bit of dynamic qualities going on here with width, volume, um, sparseness. Some of these sections feel very small, while the sound sphere has been established from the very beginning almost as pretty large. Uh, even volume wise, there is a good, I don't know, 30 dBs, give or take on my, my visualizer between our quietest and, and loudest sections. Uh, there's, uh, oh, tempo increases. We had a couple of accelerandos there at the end. Most of the tempo increases though were sharp. Uh, one moment we're doing this, the next moment we're doing that. Same with keys and chords. Uh, speaking, there's actually one section I want to talk about real quick. She shifted to basically all the black keys on the keyboard. And it's what gives it that, uh, I don't know, that Chinese music vibe that she had there like a minute uh, nine or something, nine or ten. It's pretty much all the black keys though on the keyboard. Um, interesting choice. I'm not sure the point of it. It was a very beautiful section for sure. Um, but it's, it's the section that at least to me stands out the most as far as note selection goes. Everything else feels firmly rooted in classical music, Western classical music, I should say. And that's the only one that kind of deviated from that. Um, there were no sections that pulled in, you know, uh, you know, Turkish chords. There was no sections that pulled in, uh, you know, Indian ragas or Middle Eastern vibes, but there is that one that went towards, uh, like Chinese folk music. And, uh, I don't know what to make of it. It was a beautiful section for sure. Like I said, masterfully composed, but it stands out amongst a, yeah, it was two minutes in the middle of 17 minutes of Western composition. Very interesting decision there. Much like a lot of the other choices in here that feel odd to me. I don't know what to make of it. <laughs> um, I think that's going to be about it. I talked on the composition, some of the production, the uniqueness of everything. Yeah, let's hit the lyrics. Uh, I know there's a lot. I don't. I don't know if we're gonna go through all of them. I guess it depends on how much sense we start off with. I'm mostly saying that because we're already at 45 minutes for this trap for this video, and if I have nothing to add, I don't feel a need to continue on with it. But let's start at the beginning where lyrics should start. And there was a booming above you that night black airplanes flew over the sea. And they were lowing and shifting like beached whales, shelled snails, as you strained and you squinted to see the retreat of their hairless and blind cavalry. There is a booming above you. Black airplanes flew over the sea. Shifting like beached whales or shelled snails, you strained and squinted to see them, the retreat of their hairless and blind cavalry. Okay. <sighs> I'm just going to continue and see if things start to make sense. That is a very cryptic start to this. You froze in your sand shoal, prayed for your poor soul. Sky was a bread roll, soaking in a milk bowl. And when the bread broke, fell in bricks of wet smoke, my sleeping heart woke, and my waking heart spoke. There, then there was a silence you took to mean something. Mean, run, sing, for alive you will evermore be in the plague of the greasy black engines as skulking has gone west while you're left to explain them to me, released from their hairless and blind calvary. With your hands in your pockets, stubbly running, to where I'm unfresh, undressed, and yawning, 
Well, what is this craziness, this crazy talking? You caught some small death when you were sleepwalking. It was a dark dream, darling, it's over. The fire breather is beneath the clover. Beneath his breathing there is cold clay forever. A toothless hound dog choking on a feather. <laughs> there is a lot of really interesting visualizations here. I don't even know if they're metaphor. I mean, some of it is. Uh, some of, well, let me phrase it this way. Some of it is obviously metaphor. Some of it feels like in jokes when you accidentally say the wrong words and it just becomes the word that your group utilizes, like a like in a, a click slang. And this feels like she's having a conversation with somebody close to her who understands what some of this means. And the other half is just metaphor that makes sense to her. I'm going to push on for a couple more stands as to see if anything changes. Uh, otherwise, I think we're going to wrap this up because I have nothing to add for our first eight stanzas that is not a good start <laughs> this is definitely why i'm a music analyzer not a lyrical one but i took my fishing pole fearing your fever down to the swimming hole where there grows a bitter herb that blooms but one day a year by the riverside i'd bring it here apply it gently to the love you've lent me while the river was twisting and braiding, the bait bobbed and the string sobbed as I cut through the hustling breeze. And I watched how the water was kneading so neatly, gone treacly, nearly slow to a stop in his heat in a frenzy coiling flush along the muscles beneath. Press on me, we are restless things, webs of seaweed are swaddling. You call upon the dusk of the musk of a squid shot full of ink until you sink into your crib. Rowing along among the reeds, among the rushes, I heard your song before my heart had time to hush it. Smell of a stone fruit being cut and being opened. Smell of a low and a lazy cinder smoking. So the best I can grasp here is... It's about another person. Not necessarily about any of these events in particular. Each of these stanzas is designed to evoke an emotional response that describes what somebody is feeling like in a moment. Maybe these events are loosely tied to real events. But all of it has a fantastical element to it to remove its shackles of gravity of being grounded in reality and allows them to partake in something that feels a bit less real, which allows the emotions themselves to be elevated. What would I feel like if black airplanes were like beached whales flying through the sky water? That evokes a, that evokes a very different emotion than black airplanes flying overhead. Both of them evoke uh, a feeling of terror, mostly because I have not seen black airplanes before, except for uh, military airplanes. If I see those overhead, there's probably something, <laughs> there's probably a problem. Uh, there's, there's terror in that, there's uh, discomfort, but there's a lot more discomfort and fear in the idea of beached whales flying through the sky ocean that vaguely resembles things to me but is also so foreign as to create something very uh, you know a fantastical type of fear and i think that's where she's going with most of this uh you know she was talking about fishing at a swimming hole and watching the uh, the river twist and braid while the bait bobbed and sobbed. It's not so much that she literally went fishing, but she's finding ways to explore her emotion through 
these uh, personifications of inanimate objects or over-exaggerations or uh, fantastical readings. We have somebody who seems dear to her, but also cold. It could be about a relationship. I don't know if that's uh, platonic or romantic, but there's a closeness between her and this other person in these opening 15 stanzas. Well, actually, here's one line. Uh, I found... Uh, what was it? Oh, the bitter herb that blooms one day a year by the riverside. I'd apply it gently to the love you've lent me. So I'm going to go possibly romantic on this. Uh, and it could also be a lot of the ups and downs of the relationship. The, like I said, there's definitely a, an admiration, at least from her to the other person. But I do sense a coldness from the other person to her. Um, you know, it could be a sort of unrequited love or maybe a love that has dwindled over the years where hers hasn't. And that could explain the division in a lot of this. Maybe there is this creeping element that she knows the relationship is not as strong as it used to be. And that's where those little dark chords come in momentarily in the brighter music, maybe the division, the ebb and flow of the bombastic larger sections and the quieter, more personal ones are the want to believe things are working and then the interior voice saying, you know, maybe things aren't. Maybe this is just a big way for her to uh, explore a complex relationship she has with somebody through non-traditional imagery and means which helps her figure out something that happened in her life or maybe she's just really great at embodying a character and this has nothing to do with anything in her and it's completely conceptual but it's just done in a way that she is completely empathic with this character that she's written but that's what i get here it's it's a way to understand a complex situation through hyper complex visualizations um in a way that elevates the emotions to something past the ambiguousness that they might feel into something a bit more clarity just by amplification of it. I have no idea what any of these specific lines mean, but that is what I'm picking up from the way the words feel. And maybe that's the point of it. Maybe it's not supposed to be a straightforward reading of it, but these lines all have emotional value to her. They don't have to make real sense. They don't even have to make real sense in an ungrounded way, in a fantastical way. They just have to feel a way. The way the words roll together against each other. The way they roll off the tongue and, I don't know, glide through your ear. We're going to end at that. We're going to end that one here. Normally, I would ask for an interpretation of the lyrics, but given the sheer density of it and the fact that I don't think the lyrics are as important as the sounds the lyrics make and the ideas that the lines lean into, I'm not as keen to dive in. Also, it's like a, it's like a short story's worth of lyrics. If you want to toss me a link... I'll probably gloss over it. Uh, you know, you've gone out of your way to do that for me. I'm, I'm not just going to be like, no, I'm not going to read it. But I'm not quite as interested in what the lyrics mean for this song as I usually am when lyrics go completely over my head. Those are my thoughts on Joanna Newsom's Only Skin. This is where you guys come in. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know if you enjoyed it or not. Anything that stood out to you. Anything you'd like to add on to what I stated or correct me on. Above that, you can head into the description box. There is a link for Linktree. 
takes you to this menu right here, has links for everything related to the channel. You can find multiple ways to support the channel. You can find a link to the Discord community. You can find ways to email me, check out the music I've written, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three. All right, that wraps it up for today. We'll be back tomorrow, continuing on with this week's theme and checking out another special selection. All that starts, as usual, at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 p.m. UTC. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you choose to watch my videos.